Hey everybody, welcome back to Time Value Videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pull in any kind of metrics that you want for any stocks that you want. So if you look at this, I can put in Apple or Wells Fargo, and I can change these to be whatever uh, metrics that I want for a stock. So I'll scroll up here and run the macro, and it'll pull in all the data that I'm looking for. So I can expand this as far as I want, and I can actually expand this to be more metrics if I wanted to get more metrics. So I'm going to show you how to make this so you can use it for yourself. All right, so let's jump right into it. I'm gonna walk you through how to build this spreadsheet from scratch. So all I did was open brand new workbook and I'm gonna start from sheet one. The only thing that I changed was in sheets two, I put in the list of codes that we're gonna be able to download from Yahoo. Um, I'll put a link in the description below so you can download this list yourself and so that you can use it. If you're gonna build this while you're watching the video, um, you can use the, the link that's in the description to get these codes so you can do it yourself. Cool, so in sheet one, we're just gonna first start by building an outline of what it's gonna look like. And so I'm gonna use codes right there, and in the, the box next to it in B1, it's just gonna be a list of any random letters and numbers right now. Later, we're gonna actually import the codes from over here. And so, uh, for right now, I'm just gonna use a placeholder right there. And then in A1, or A5, I'm gonna put tickers, and then below that, I'm just gonna put a list of tickers. Uh, it can be anything you want. Uh, let's do MCD. Perfect. So you can put any tickers you want. You can put as many as you want or just one. It doesn't matter. Whatever kind of information you're trying to pull, you can have any tickers you want. Now we're also going to leave the column B empty. And because the macro we're going to write is going to use uh, what's called a current region. And so if we have it right next to the list of tickers, it's actually going to overlap our tickers. And we don't want to do that. So we're going to start all of our information in column C. We're going to just leave a B empty. B1, having the word codes right there, that's okay. We just need kind of a, a buffer region that kind of looks like this, where it's got just a, a border, if I do that. So we're going to have all of our information go here. Cool. So we're going to start in C4. We're going to go to Developer. We're going to insert a combo box. And that's the one to the right of the top left corner. And So I'm going to imp import our combo box. And if you hold down the Alt key while you drag and drop it, uh, you can snap it to all the cells that are in Excel. And so I'm going to snap it to fit exactly in C4. And so if I click on it, you can see there's nothing in it. If I do the drop down, there's nothing in our drop down. And so we're going to need to, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go to Format Control. And then under Input Range, I'm going to select our input range. And that's going to be under our list of codes. It's going to be all of the stuff in column B. We don't want to click column B and select the entire column at once because that's going to add a bunch of blank lines and then your whole drop down box is going to be mostly blank with a few things on it at the top. And so you want to click and drag and highlight just the stuff that's in column B. Then we hit enter. And for the cell link, I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to choose the box immediately above the, the drop down. And that's just going to make it really easy to have everything right in one spot. Hit enter again. I'm going to leave my drop down lines at 8. You can make it any number you want. It doesn't matter that much. Um, just for aesthetics, I like to leave it at 8 because it looks nice. And hit OK. And so that drop down, that number 8, is how many things can you see when you click the drop down. If you put 30 or something, then it would drop down really far. If you just had one, then you'd only see the word ask. And so now that we have that, if I click on any of these, you can see it updates the number right above it. And that was the cell link that we said. And so the number 29 right here, that's for the day's high. If I go back to the codes right here, I can scroll down, I can see row 29 is days high. And so what it's doing is it's importing whatever I select on here, it's telling me what row number it is on the other sheet, which is perfect because in order to get these codes that are right here in column A, we're going to need to know what row number they're in. And so we're going to use the index and match function, which index. And I actually have a video about how to use uh, index. Actually, we don't need match in this case, but I have a video on how to use index and match together. Uh, and I'll put an annotation for it right here so you can click on that link and go look at that video if you want. But we're just going to use index by itself right now actually. And so I'm going to oops, I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see. So the first thing we want when you use index is where is your answer going to be located? Uh, it, the, the response from index with the, the answer that, that the that index is going to give is going to be in C2. But the answer for wh what do we want to be in C2 is going to be something from column A on our codes list. And so I'm going to go over here and choose column A. And I'm going to hit comma. I'm going to go back to sheet one. And it's going to say, what row number are we looking for? Well, we actually just want whatever row number is being output by the drop down menu below it. So right now that's 34. If I change this, then that number 34 will change. So we're just going to reference that cell and we hit enter. And so right now it says J3. If I were to change that, you see it's changes to K, it'll change to I5, 
So it'll change to whatever code we're looking for depending on what I select in here. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. So if you wanted to add more of these uh, drop down boxes, you could have as many as you want. I'll add one more and I'll run through it real quick just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, but you can add 10 of them if you want to. So I'm going to go insert combo box. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to snap it to the cell right next to it. I'm going to right click and go to format control. My input range is going to be B, B1 through B75 because that's all of the information that we have here. Hit enter. Our cell link is going to be the box right above it. Hit enter. And our drop down line will be 8. Perfect. So now I can test it, make sure it works. Great. And then this formula, I can just, I need to, to lock in column A real quick. So I'm just going to edit it. And I'm going to click inside in between the A's right there. I'm going to hit F4. And that's going to lock those in. I'm going to hit enter. And now I can just copy this over. And it can copy as far as I want. If I add more lines, since these are all blank, it's not working over here. But if I added more drop down boxes, then it would start working just fine. So now I have just those two. You can add as many as you want. I'm going to do two just for the sake of time. And then we have all the tickers we want. You could add more or less. Um, and I'm just going to do these ones. So great. Now that we have that, now we're just going to write the macro that's going to pull in the data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Visual Basic. Well, actually, I'll show you in macros. I don't have any macros yet. And so if I go to Visual Basic, you can see that it's kind of blank right here. So I'm going to hit Control-R. That's going to open the project window over here. And I'm going to go to this workbook. Then I can get rid of it now that we're in this workbook. And then so we have nothing here. So we're going to do sub metrics get. And that gives us an end sub. And then so we're going to want to just kind of work one thing at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of any old data that might be here. So if we had ran this macro before, there might be some old data that fills in right here. And we just want to get rid of that. And so what we'll do is I'll make a comment, uh, clear old data, and then to clear that, I'm going to say range C6 through, and then I'm just going to do ZZ999 because I want it to go as far to the down and to the right as possible. So just delete everything, dot delete. So it'll get rid of all of that stuff. And that's all we need. And what it'll do is just if I run it, you can see, it'll, well, you can't really see because you can't tell, but it's just deleting everything that's between C6 and then it's just going to go down 999 rows and to the right, um, I don't know, like 52 rows or something, whatever ZZ is. So, all right, now the next thing we're going to do is we need to get a list of tickers because our URL that's going to pull in the data needs to have the list of whatever tickers we're looking for. And so we're going to do that. And we're just going to say get list of tickers. And I'm going to use a for loop to do that. And since we're starting our for loop on row six, which is where our tickers are, we're going to do for uh, tickers get equals six because we're starting on row six. Two, and then I don't know how far down we're going to go because we might have like if these weren't here then we might only go down one but if they were there then we might go down you know as many as we need and so the end of the the list of tickers could be as long as however many tickers you have and so the way to do that to make sure it's a it's called a dynamic ending to that row we're going to do cells and then I'm going to say what row are we on we're starting on row six column one then we're going to the end, so I do dot end, XL down, and which end are we going to? We're going to the top or the bottom? We're going down, so I'm going to say down, dot row, and that says end on whatever row is in the last one of that column. So perfect, so we have that, and then anytime you have a for loop, you have to have a next, and whatever the next is is going to be tickers, get, because that's what our for is, and then inside that, we're going to say ticker string equals ticker string and and then each ticker is going to have a plus sign between it and cells and then what tickers are we getting we're getting the ones from ticker get comma one and that's just saying whatever so we're going to go one cell at a time and whatever's in that cell is going to be tacked on to the end so if i stop it right here and run it you can see oh, what we're we doing here tick oh i used s okay tickers get tickers get cool so you need to make sure uh, I, I put ticker get right here instead of putting tickers get. So you need to make sure your variable is the same for the for loop and all of them match each other. Cool. So I'm going to run. Now we have, you can see we have a list of all of our tickers right here and they all have plus signs in between them. Now for the URL that we're going to be pulling, we don't want to have that first plus sign. That's going to get in the way. And so we want all the other plus signs, just not that first one. And so the code to change that is we're going to say tickers, uh, ticker string, ticker string equals whatever ticker string already was, but we need not all of it. We need just the right side of it. And all of and we want everything in there still just from the right side and then subtract the first item. So what we do is we say len 
ticker string. So that says the entire length of ticker string minus one because that's everything f starting from the right except for the very first one. If I did minus two, it would cut off the X also, but we want to include everything. So minus one says cut off the very first thing and then hit, en uh, forgot to close my parentheses. There we go. So now we have, and I'll run it again so you can see it. It's the exact same thing, just no plus sign in the beginning. Great. So now that we have that, now we just need to tack on the URL. So th the information that we're pulling from Yahoo is going to need a URL. And so we'll say ticker string equals, and now the URL is HTTP colon slash slash download, download dot finance dot Yahoo dot com slash D slash quotes dot CSV then a question mark s equals and now that's the first half of it then we need and our list of tickers so ticker string and and then the url also requires the the text on the end of it to say uh, and f equals and then the last thing that we need so we're going to do and again the last thing that we need to tack on there is our codes from cell b1 over here so i'm just going to put cells and then b1 is 1 comma 2 Close that. Um, don't need the last close. We should be good there. Yep, perfect. So now our ticker, so I'll stop it and run it one more time so you can see. Now ticker string is that entire URL with all of our tickers, with the and f equals, and then all of our code at the end. Cool. So actually, now that I'm looking at that code, I'm realizing that that code does not match here. So what we need to do is use the, the function concatenate. So I'm just going to jump over real quick. So concatenate says combine a bunch of stuff into one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine everything in row two because that's where all of our codes are. So I'm going to say concatenate and I'm going to click on C2. I'm going to hit comma D2. And then if you had more metrics, you can just add as many on as you want. It doesn't matter. You just keep going for as many metrics as you have. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then even if you have blank ones like I did, it still works as long as you have something in one of them. Uh, it'll just combine all of them together. So that'll work right there. So now A5, B3. And now if I change this, you can see they update uh, each other automatically. So B3C8, B3C8, perfect. So everything works great there. So now, if I run it, now I can make sure, so B3C8, B3C8, so perfect. So our URL is pulling exactly what we need it to. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do, I'm going to get rid of that stop now, and I'm going to stop that. So now we just need to import data from C6, oops, to C6, to C6. So we're going to import whatever our ticker string URL is and import it into C6, which is right here because that's where our tickers are going to start. And so to do that, we're going to need a Q-U-E-R-Y-Q-U-O-T-E, query quote, colon, and then we need a with. So we're going to do with active sheet dot query, Q -U -E -R -Y, query tables dot add, and then connection, and then colon equals, and now we're going to pull, for what connection, we're going to pull a URL and that URL is going to be, be and we already have our ticker string and that's our u whole URL so ticker string comma so the URL that we're pulling is ticker string so that we have that now our destination equals range we're going to put it in C6 and then close one more parentheses and now we have a width anytime you have a width you have to have an end width just like anytime you have a for you have to have a next Anytime you have a width, you have to have an end width. Inside the width, we're going to do background, background, Q-U-E-R-Y, background, background query equals true, and then dot refresh, background, Q-U-E-R-Y, colon equals false. If you forget that colon, I don't think it'll work. Perfect. So now we have just this by itself. We'll import all of the data and scrunch it up right here. Um, and I'll run it real quick so you can see it's all scrunched up. And okay, so I picked things that don't have any data for right now. So let's do the bid and the ask. So you can see that they have something there. Run it. Perfect. So now it just gets all of our data, but it's all scrunched up. So now we need to write the code that's going to sp space it out so it all fits and looks kind of nice and neat. And we do that with something called or something called delimited. Um, so what we're going to do is delimit delimited data delimited data spelling doesn't actually matter for a, a comment but that's okay so we do to delimit it we need range and since it's starting in c6 we do range c6 dot current region 
and that says everything that's connected to it. So that's why we needed that blank buffer line right here because we're saying anything because we don't know how far down it's going to go. So anything connected to it for as long as it goes, that's dot current region, dot text to columns, and that's what delimited means is we're splitting all of this stuff into multiple columns, and then we're going to do destination colon equals range. We're going to put it in C6 again because that's where we're starting and that's kind of where we're expanding from. Comma data type colon equals XL delimited. And then comma, then we do the character comma, and then we do the word comma, and then colon equals true. And then that should be it. And that's all we need there. And so this, what this is, is doing delimited, and it's the same thing as if we had gone up to data, highlighted all of this, and done text to columns right here. So that's what we just typed in for the delimited stuff is the same thing as choosing text to columns right there. So running that by itself should be all we need. Let's run it real quick and see if it worked. There we go. So now we have our bid, and so let's change this to something else so we can see uh, earnings per share or something. And then we can go back and we can run it. Cool. So now let's just do some kind of touch-up stuff. So I'm going to go to Insert on the Developer tab. I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to insert a button, and then I'm going to hold down Alt so it snaps to fit. And I'm going to assign that button, the, met the metrics get macro that we just wrote. Hit OK. Now if I run it, it should update everything we need. And then let's go ahead and make this a little easier to read because it's kind of small. There we go. And we'll make that a little bigger. So you can have as many in here as you want. You just change them all. So let's go days low. So this is the days low. That's the current ask price. Uh, and it might update live. I'm not sure. Oh, there's an ask for real time. Let's see if that works. Uh, that one doesn't pull as easy. Um, the market's open right now. But that's a, oh, we already have days low. Days high. There we go. So there we go. So we have the days low and the days high together. So you can pull in any information that you want. And it should all work. So that's how to pull in macro or pull in metrics for uh, as many tickers as you want to have for as many metrics as you want to have. And if you wanted to add more, you just go through the the process of adding another drop down box, just like I added those two. And you can keep tacking them on and just make sure your concatenate includes all of the codes that you have, and it should be just fine. If you have any questions on how to do this, if it's not working for you, I know this is a much longer video than I usually mean to do. But if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I will do my best to try to answer them. Or maybe some of the awesome people that watch my videos will be able to answer some questions for you too. Also, if you have any suggestions for current videos, I mean for my next videos, go ahead and put a comment in the description below or in the comment box below also and I'll, uh, I'll get on trying to make some new videos for you. My next few are probably going to be related to technical analysis just like I have. Um, I'll put some annotations over here so you can see. I have one for uh, how to do the moving average crossover and how to do Bollinger Bands. And both of those are automated based on importing historical prices so you can see how they've changed. And um, you can go and kind of make an, uh, a, a trade suggestion, I guess, based on uh, what comes in for that data. So I'll put some annotations over on the side so you can look at those. Uh, but that's it. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. And you'd probably like these ones too. Start on the income statement so that is actually the entirety of creating a custom function right there. I'll show you over here how it works. So I can do equals. I can do quarter. I just see quarter. So I hit tab to select it. So I hit tab.